Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers. Um, nice to see all of you today, and I hope you enjoy your special day. Um, several announcements this morning. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about some uh, prayer concerns. Uh, Vern Houchins had successful back surgery and is home uh, from the hospital and doing well. Um, his wife Marilyn, though, is home with pneumonia, so prayers for the both of them. Um, also prayers to um, Allison Cummins, um, who is home from the hospital, who's had some tests. She's had abdominal pains, and they can't seem to find the cause of those, so we wish her all the best. Um, Paul Meyer passed away on June 16th. Um, Paul is a brother to Catherine Cole uh, and related to others in our congregation. Um, his funeral service will be on June 23rd, a graveside service uh, in Memorial Park. Uh, we welcome Reverend Michael Irwin from Evansville for being our guest speaker today. So we thank him and, and uh, look forward to hearing from him. Are there any other announcements that I should make at this time? All right, well then let us um, rise and greet each other with a passing peace. Thank you. Oh, no. Please respond to the call to worship. Sometimes it seems as though God is far away. We look to the heavens and wonder why God doesn't deal more strictly with the wicked and more compassionately with the innocent. Come, let us turn to the Lord whose very heart is compassion and hope. Please join me in the unison invocation. Lord of justice and mercy, we come to you this day seeking your healing 
and reconciling love. Help us to be open to your word, your presence, your compassion. Clear our hearts of those things which block your will. Keep us focused on your enabling power so that we, having been healed, may more fully serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'd like to speak with the children, if they'd please come forward. Good morning. How are my favorite bar girls? Good, 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 good. Anything exciting happen this week? Oh, that's so exciting. You've never met them before, have you? Wow, that's so cool. Well, it's interesting because my um, talk today is about changes how we always have changes in our lives. So I'm an old person, so there's been a lot of changes in my life, okay? So I want to share with you a little bit about this. Now, I don't know if you know this about me or not, but I like music, okay? So when I was young growing up, we used albums. Have you ever seen an album before? This is a record album. And so you put it on a record player, and it has grooves on it, and then there's a needle that goes on it, and it spins around and around and it plays songs. So that's how I would listen to special songs, was through the record album. Well then, times change. So they came along with something called an eight track. You know what an eight track is? Yeah, I know, crazy, isn't it? Now these are songs of Christmas. Um, and you have to have a special machine for this. You plug it in, or you push it in, and then you can actually play a different track, whatever track you want to play. And that actually works still, okay. I do have an eight track player at home. I know that's hard to believe. And then they changed it and said, okay, we're gonna put it on cassette tape. Now you've probably seen a cassette tape before, right? Okay, and so this little cassette tape, um, you stick into the machine and, and it plays. Now, what's hard about a cassette tape, it's hard to get it right on the song that you want to hear. So sometimes you just have to play it through until you get the song you want. All right. And then they changed to CDs. You know CDs, right? Okay. One of my favorite musicals, Joseph, I had that on CD. So, yeah. Sorry about the mic. I know I probably don't have it on right. Okay. And then they changed to something called... Oh my gosh, let me see if I can find this little thing. You know what this is? You've seen that before? It's an iPod. So digital music came along and they put music uh, digitally and you could download that on an iPod and then you plug your earphones into that and turn it on and you can listen to the iPod. Yeah, weird, huh? So now guess what I use? Good old phone, because now you download, download music on your phone and you can listen to music on your phone. So all these ways have changed over the years. Now, I got to thinking about how many changes have happened just in your lifetimes. Can you think of any changes that have happened? Well, one, I'll help you out here. One big thing has been COVID, right? So that changed how you did school, didn't it? Absolutely. So you did stuff more online and um, you had to social distance and, you know, you were, had to stay in groups maybe or something like that at school. Um, things are changing all the time. The seasons change. We go from one season to another. The weather changes. We go from hot to cold to rain to snow, just like that in a blast. So how do we deal with these changes? just kind of have to go with it. It's out of your control, isn't it? Yeah. 
Well, the one thing that is always constant and will always be dependable is God's love for you. I will always be there. And I think that is so reassuring in this day and age of change because it just feels good to know that God's love is ever present in your life. God will always be there for you. God supports you no matter what. And that is just such a great thing. So I hope that you remember that. Um, and if you would join me in a short little prayer here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of changes in our lives. Help us to accept them and appreciate the variety of life. Thank you for your constant and abiding love and presence in our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good luck with your big news today, okay? I hope you enjoy it. The gifts of God come generously and abundantly. We hold, nurture, and amplify them as they are entrusted to our care. We respond faithfully by sharing them for the good of community and creation. In this act of faith and trust, we transform our resources of time, talent, and finances into the good news in the world. We give you thanks, God our help, for the abundance of the gifts you have planted in us as seeds that we may share in bloom. May these offerings be received and magnified for your glory. Amen.
addressed here before I get rolling. Good morning. So happy to be here this morning. Thank you for allowing me to be in your space, in God's house. Thanks and praise be to God uh, for this day, for this Father's Day, but also for this Lord's Day, uh, that we can be uh, in worship together and enjoying his presence. Um, I have a little bit more of introduction to myself, but first, let's get to our scripture reading. A familiar passage from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. I think you'll be uh, familiar with this story. And as I told Pastor Dennis, uh, coming as the chaplain of the Good Samaritan Home in Evansville, uh, it's no surprise that I would choose this particular story about the Good Samaritan. So listen for God speaking uh, through the words of Scripture this morning. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, and having poured oil and wine on them, And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Now, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. And he, and he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. May we be blessed in hearing and understanding God's holy word. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? <coughs> O Lord, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, folks, uh, thank you, Jill and Brian and Dieta for welcoming me so so well this morning. I'm glad to be here. I'm Reverend Michael Irwin. uh, As Jill said, I'm from Evansville. Uh, drove up this morning, um, crossed that time zone line, made it. Uh, I told Brian, I still have an hour yet to write a sermon, according to my watch. So you guys want to hang around for that? or? <laughs> uh, I'm the chaplain of the Good Samaritan Home. I've been a UCC minister uh, in the Evansville Tri-State Association, just to your south, uh, for 20 years. And before that, Presbyterian um, served four churches in the Evansville tri-state area uh, in those 20 years and now the chaplain of the Good Samaritan Home uh, which is a long-term care and memory care uh, home in Evansville and maybe some of you have heard of it I know you have um, because uh, way back 60 years ago this past January uh, the churches of the um, uh, former uh, Synod of Southern Indiana of the Evangelical and Reformed Church, uh, including this church, uh, f- 
formed the Good Samaritan Home as a one of a kind in this area uh, facility that uh, just didn't exist before. Um, so thank you for doing that. Those of you whose parents and grandparents were around uh, as part of that, um, every church I go to in the area says, yes, I was on the board or I was on this committee or my mom was really involved in that. So it's really wonderful. I've been trying to, uh, well, Pastor Dennis and I have been work, trying to work out a schedule for a year and a half for me to come, and I'm glad to be here today. I do want to thank you. Uh, about uh, last, late last year, uh, we sent out a, 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 an appeal uh, to the churches who are members, and that, that's you, you're a member of our corporate body. You actually own the Good Samaritan Home. And we sent out an appeal to our churches because we needed a new van to transport our residents to doctor's appointments and dialysis appointments and uh, other medical uh, things that they needed to attend to. And uh, those vans aren't cheap. Um, and uh, St. John's Vincennes responded uh, with a gift and we're really grateful for that. And in fact, with all the supply chain issues, which I'm sure you've dealt with in your own life, uh, it took us about six months, but Friday, the new van rolled into our parking lot, so we're really excited. I have a picture of it on my phone if you want to see it. We don't have the decals on yet, so it doesn't look exactly the way we want it, but thank you for being a part of that. I know that Evansville is a, is a fair piece down the road, um, but I appreciate that the distance doesn't keep us apart, so thank you for that. So I do bring you greetings from uh, Bert Papinaw. Bert's our administrator. And from Andy Mosier. Andy is the president of our board of directors. And um, just, I feel very grateful uh, to be here today. And, and very good that um, it's worked out. As, as I was pulling, I'm gonna get to a sermon in a minute, folks. This is just the way it goes with Michael sometimes. I was pulling up this morning, I thought, I've never been to St. John's, and I uh, pulled in the parking lot and saw the glass entryway, and I said, oh yeah, I have been here one time, but not on a Sunday, so I'm really happy to be here. I was here to meet with uh, the, pa the former pastor a few years ago, and we went out and had lunch and had a good time, so. Um, Just a little bit about me uh, today, Father's Day is a real special day for me. I have two grown daughters. Uh, I've heard from one of them already today. Um, so, hey, 50%, that's not bad. Happy Father's Day to all you uh, gentlemen out there. It's also uh, special to me. My dad passed about six years ago. Uh, he was young, he was 69. And then my uh, youngest and only brother passed last December and so I'm thinking about his three children especially today so um, keep them in your prayers now I want to turn to a familiar parable this morning and not surprisingly as I said the namesake of our organization the Good Samaritan Home um, and I want to share I grew up in a little Presbyterian church south of Atlanta in a little town called Griffin. Um, I fool the people in Evansville all the time. They say, where'd you grow up? I say, in Griffin. And they say, oh, you must know so-and-so. And I'm like, wrong Griffin. So, um, but my youth group leader uh, down in that little church taught me a little trick uh, about reading the parables of Jesus because they always have such wonderful characters in them and such wonderful stories and they always end with some kind of a, a question or an imperative and so what she taught us to do was to was to just think about who those characters were in the story and really ponder like we can't they're not real people right Jesus made these stories up but just to ponder maybe in your own imagination and um, so as we read the scripture of the Good Samaritan story, we obviously, we run into some, uh, run into some interesting characters. Even before we get into the story, we run into this lawyer uh, who wants to justify himself. And so just 
uh, insert your favorite lawyer joke right in the middle of this sermon right here and go on. I'm sorry if there's any lawyers in here. Um, it's good for you to be here. <laughs> Are you a lawyer? <laughs> there you go. It's good for you to be here. But we, when we get, really get into the story, uh, there's some really great characters. First of all, the first person we run into is this man, right, who's just traveling. But he happens to be traveling between two towns where the road that he traveled on was dangerous. It was well known that it was dangerous. And yet, because of the necessity of whatever it was he had to get to, he had to go that way. And as it came about, uh, then we run into our second uh, character, set of characters, are these robbers uh, who set upon him and, as the scripture says, strip him and beat him and leave him on the side of the road for dead. And so we can think about why this man had to go, what, and what was so imperative and why did he uh, enter into this dangerous uh, journey uh, there had to be some kind of necessity to that. And then, we had, and then we can think about the robbers. And we can think about, obviously we can think, oh, they're just bad people who go out robbing. But there's other ways to view them, right? You can think about, now why did they feel the need uh, to be in that line of living? So there's the robbers, and there's the man on the side of the road. And then we have the three characters that really we zero in on a little bit, the priest and the Levite, who are almost identical in, in the way that they approach uh, the story as they you know, move far. You know, there's, a, there's a real movement in this story. They, they move to the other side of the road so that they don't have to get close to whatever tragedy is laying there in the gutter on the side of the road. Uh, that physicality of just distancing themselves from uh, the hurt of the world, the hurt of that man. And so those two characters come through. And then we have, right, the hero of the story, uh, the, the Samaritan. We've called him the good Samaritan because he does good things. And, and his physicality is he, he comes near to the tragedy on the side of the road. Now, why? I mean, why would he choose to move towards tragedy? We wonder about that sometimes when we think about people who, when danger arises, they don't run from it, but they run towards it. And so what, it, what, what was it about his life that he ran towards the hurt and the pain and the disaster of the world? And, and when he moved near, had pity. And you wonder, well, he must have been, must have had pity even before just to even move uh, closer to the man and picks him up, carries him. Um, and then we come to uh, a character of the story that is not, uh, this barely even mentioned um, and doesn't really do much acting, although it can be implied that this person did something. And that is the innkeeper. Uh, who uh, the Samaritan, you know, comes to this guy, stays with him overnight, and then in the morning wakes up and tells the innkeeper, take care of him, and, and I'll be back, and I'll pay anything it costs, whatever you put out of your own resources. <coughs> so you could choose any one of those characters and really delve in to, like, what was, who were they, and why did they do what they did? And we can do that with some compassion for each one of them, even for the robbers and even for the priest and Levite who may not make the best decisions, any of them, but we can still look upon them and wonder, why? Why? Now hold that, hold that thought, because I want to come back to that, to the innkeeper in this story uh, that I've renamed just this morning the parable of the innkeeper. But the next thing I want to do is just kind of tell you, like, what does a chaplain do at the Good Samaritan home on a typical day? And um, typical day is, is uh, that's a lie. There are no typical days. But this is, this is a day in the life of Michael at the Good Samaritan home. And just imagine that it's Tuesday morning. And on Tuesday mornings, I lead a, a Bible study uh, on one of our uh, memory care units. 
uh, we have two memory the two units that are specifically designated for memory care people who are who are uh, suffering affected by dementia of all kinds mostly Alzheimer's but not all Alzheimer's and so I lead a Bible study on both of those but on Tuesday morning it's on this one that we call pathways one it's it's all women um, it's more if, if you were to walk in it looks like assisted living there's not much nursing care uh, there they can pretty much take care of themselves but they need that secure environment um, to keep them safe so I'm on my way to teach Bible study but I know that the first thing I want to do before I get to the room to, where uh, the Bible study is set up and people are gathering already I want to stop in and see a lady named Marcia and the reason I want to see her is because she doesn't come out of her room much anymore um, you know, we had a we had a in October and November of 2020, uh, we had a pretty bad outbreak of COVID in the, in the in the home. Uh, it devastated us. Uh, we lost 19 people uh, in 30 days, and that's uh, that's out of 150 at the time. So that was quite that that really hurt us pretty badly. Um, but not only did we lose 19 people, but a lot but we had to isolate folks in their rooms because we you know we weren't remember 2020 we didn't know a lot you know all we knew that is people were spreading it among each other so we we isolated people in their rooms and they they ate there they spent all day there they they all have bathrooms in there so they never came out for about six months and they had just these limited interactions with people coming in to uh, provide care for them um, and to provide meals for them and also one-on-one uh, -on -one activities but but that was pretty much it so when the whole thing opened up again um, we had some people who had you know for whatever reason just didn't come back out of their rooms again even though they were completely free to do so uh, something in their psyche had just um, they weren't in, interested in group activities anymore. They weren't interested in coming out and eating in the dining room anymore. And Marsha was one of those. She prefers the comfort and the quiet of her room. She does like for me to come visit. Um, and uh, she especially uh, likes uh, when we sing hymns together. And she really loves when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, so I stop in to see Marcia, and but today Marcia is anxious, um, which is unusual. But as I say, Marcia, you know what's happening? What's wrong? And she says, she tells me that uh, she's missed the school bus and that she doesn't have a way home from school today. Now this is, you know, it's it's uh, a little it's not so unusual to enter into a conversation with somebody who's in a different place uh, in a different time so I've learned over over my time there that um, you know I can't argue Marsha back into my reality so we're just gonna go with hers we're just gonna go with hers and anything I can do to to help her go through that moment uh, less anxious and more at peace and so I mentioned to Marsha that there's another school bus coming um, and that it'll be here in just a few minutes and and if we and if while we wait would she like to sing uh, the old rugged cross and so yeah uh, she's agreeable on this day and and so I begin on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross and now she's joining in and singing with me you know because she knows the words of this song and as it as it goes on for some reason on this day you know as I get to the sort of the end of the first verse my voice cracks and it falters a little bit and and I drop out and Marcia keeps singing through the end of the first verse and so now I think okay but Marcia has memory problems so I'm gonna pick up the second verse to help remind her and yet she jumps in before I can even get started right Marcia doesn't know what what time it is she doesn't know what day it is she doesn't know where she is she barely maybe remembers who I am but she remembers the old rugged cross 
all the verses and I just let her sing and then we pray the Lord's Prayer another thing she remembers and they bring her comfort that those kind of things happen just about every day at the Good Samaritan home not just with me but with all of our staff and, and all of our and the families that come in um, supporting our residents and their overall well-being and ensuring that they enjoy life to their fullest ability body mind and spirit so maybe you already know firsthand the kind of work we do I was talking with Brian uh, this morning his mom was in the Good Samaritan home so Brian knows maybe some of the rest of you know the kind of work that we do there which we do uh, regardless of the ability uh, whether they can pay or not uh, in fact uh, as of Friday more than 85 percent of our people uh, were were covered by Medicaid uh, in our facility and um, that Medicaid the, the government the money the money the government sends doesn't cover the care that we believe they deserve and so we continue to provide that care uh, even though we lose money when we do it and there's challenges for any kind of long-term care or any kind of uh, memory care just because of that but we're soldiering on nonetheless we're always trying to find new and better ways to to provide a caring community and a community that exists in an atmosphere of of Christian love and concern when you become a resident of the home we never turn you out and like I said when you lose the ability to pay you don't have to go anywhere else that happens in other facilities and in fact those people also often end up coming to us when they've been uh, kicked out of other places our home is your home for as long as you need so Marsha um, so Marsha you know ended up being peaceful as we sang and uh, we, we have a term for that by the way it's useful when thinking about people who are suffering dementia it's called redirection you just you know try to get them thinking about something else and and bring them to a state of peace whatever that might be so I'm off to the hearth room where the ladies are waiting um, for the uh, waiting for me to come for the Bible study they're actually not waiting they're they're playing one of their most fun games they have these big you know the exercise balls you can sit on like and you know get your core going and all they have those they're not sitting on them um, but they have those and then they have pool noodles that have been uh, cut in half and they're drumming uh, along to the music there it's one of their uh, favorite things they do uh, the other thing that they love to do is they love to get their hair cut uh, the first day I worked there I was in orientation uh, to the home and uh, I was in orientation with a few other people including a new hairdresser and they toured us around the facility and here's here's Reverend Michael he's our new chaplain oh good we finally have a new chaplain and and here's Christy our hairdresser oh my gosh a hairdresser we've been waiting for you put me in my place I know where I stand oh and if you think that's something uh, you know when I first came there uh, they said you can schedule anything you want any time you want as long as it's not two o'clock on Mondays or Thursdays because that's when they play bingo <laughs> so there you go the Good Samaritan home is a special place in the 50s uh, some they weren't UCC at the time right they were ENRs at that time although it changed in the midst of all that but some good ENR people uh, in all these churches around here got together and said let's do something different you know at that time I, some of you may can think back to the 50s and what if your uh, loved one was elderly and, and, and it was getting beyond what the family could take care of there, there were boarding houses they could go to there was, there was no nursing care 
uh, no activities program or, or anything like that. There were six or eight or ten people in a room, kind of a boarding house kind of atmosphere where they just went to die without very much dignity, really. Um, and, uh, you know, and I even tell our staff, like, there was no, you know, Indiana State Department of Health looking over our shoulders, which we all hate, but at the same time, you know, that's a good thing uh, to have somebody looking over our shoulders to make sure we're doing <coughs> providing <laughs> dignity um, and so the the good people of this area just said let's do something new and they raised the money and they figured out how to get the licenses the medical licenses and hire the staff and they went and found a location and everything they needed to do it took them about uh, eight years and in 1962 January 15th the first four residents moved in and and we had 40 by the end of February. That was full up. And uh, that, that old building is still there. We use it every day. It's the main part of our, our main part of our home. We've added on over the years. But so I, I just think about the people that had the, the vision and the energy and the commitment and the passion to do that and what it took to get it off the ground. And when you walk in the doors of the Good Samaritan Home today, they had so much love back in the early 60s that they put into this place it's still there you can feel it you can feel them even after our 60 years so think about those characters in that parable i tend to think uh we have we carry around the name the good samaritan home um I'm not sure that's true to the story and the way that we play our role. We're more, more or less the innkeeper. We're more or less the people that uh, the, the Samaritans out in the world uh, that really the Lord brings to us and, um, and tells us, take care of them and whatever it costs you, I'll pay it when I come back. And that's how we live. That's how we live. We live on uh, his teachings. We live on the love of those who founded this place. And we live on the prayers uh, of good folks like you who are praying for us every day. We're just sitting on uh, Bakey Road near Wesselman Park waiting for Samaritans like you to arrive at our doors with those who need uh, the kind of care that we can provide. We're the innkeepers, and you're the Samaritans. And for that, uh, I'm grateful every day. And I'm grateful to the Lord for this ministry. You know, nowadays, uh, you know, you, there's, there's care facilities here in Vincennes. You know, they're, they're everywhere. Um, and it's all because back in the beginning, there were good church people who said, we need something different and uh and she really changed the way changed the world uh and i'm grateful to them and grateful to the lord for that uh as well amen let's pray lord god you call us you call us to be your ministers your ambassadors in in every area of life in which we live you call us to a vision that, that is beyond even what we can imagine. You call us, above all, to love you with everything we have, every ounce of energy and love and intelligence and imagination we can muster, and to apply that uh, energy towards our neighbors and towards their plight, <coughs> especially when we see suffering, O oh God. Give us a heart to move near to the disasters and the tragedies and the, the dark and hurting places of the world. Help us to have the courage and the strength and the moral fortitude to take on that evangelical courage that our forebears had when they came to this country in the very first days a courage that leads us to care for every one of your creatures. Help us never to shrink back from doing your will. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, folks, uh, you get two prayers in a row because I always end my sermons with a prayer, and now I'm looking at the bullets, and it's like pastoral prayer. So I do ask that you would keep in mind the folks that are listed in your bulletin that Jill mentioned. Uh, you know them. I obviously don't, but ask that you would pray for them. Um, also, just to give thanks to God uh, for our fathers. You know, many of us, we, we don't have them around anymore, but didn't they bless us? Uh, the best of them did uh, bless us, and so we give thanks to them. Um, it's a double holiday today, believe it or not. Um, Father's Day, but also Juneteenth. I wonder if you've heard about that. That's the uh, uh, new uh, federal holiday, uh, but it's been celebrated by our uh, African-American sisters and brothers uh, forever. It's the day that recognizes um, the when the Emancipation Proclamation was finally uh, delivered to the state of Texas, the last one, and that was two years after the proclamation was delivered. Uh, uh, announced by our uh, President Lincoln uh, it took two years for the enslaved people in Texas to even hear the words um, but what a celebration um, it's special to me I'm not from here I'm from Georgia um, and uh, when I look into my genealogy I see the darkness that's there um, and uh, it's also special to me my niece uh, is adopted she's uh, African-American as well and uh, I, I pray for her safety uh, each and every day. So I'm, I'm going to lift up that, uh, this idea of God's, um, how we're created in God's image during my prayer today. Um, and, it, and all of us are created in that image. But I would encourage you to lift up your own prayers, even as I'm praying. You have your own concerns uh, for your own lives and for those you care about as well. So let's turn to God uh, in prayer and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> holy Presence, God, whom we know in your holy community, the church, creative spirit that breaks the walls of the church down and flies out everywhere to touch the hurting world, with your message of peace, driving out fear in your perfect love. You made us in your own image and you redeemed us through your son, Jesus Christ. And for that, we give you all the thanks and praise. Today, we ask that you would look with compassion on the whole human family and take away the arrogance and the hatred that infects our hearts that you would break down the walls that separate us, that you would unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and our, even our discomfort and our confusion, that you would work through us and through our weaknesses to accomplish your purposes on earth. So that in your good time, every people and every nation may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Out of the darkness we cry to you, O Holy Presence, enable us to find in Christ the faith to trust your care even in the midst of our own pain. Assure us that we do not walk alone through the valley of the shadow of death but that your rod and your staff, they do comfort us and that your light is leading us into light. Where our hearts are feel fearful and where they tighten and constrict, we ask you to grant courage and hope and openness. Where anxiety infects us, grant peace and reassurance. Where where impossibilities seem to close every door and window, grant us imagination. Where distrust twists our thinking, we ask that you would grant healing and illumination. When our spirits are daunted and weakened and at their worst, we ask that you would, that we could mount up 
on your wings and soar through your dream for all of us. You call us into deeper relationships every day, deeper than we had yesterday, to be your church, the true church for the sake of the world, given out, poured out in service to the communities in which we exist. Help us to see with new eyes the injustices within society and even within churches. Call us to have hearts that love and that respect and that uplift the humanity and the dignity of every one of your precious children. Open our ears to listen and to learn from each other and to listen and learn, especially in these days, from the experiences of the peop of people of color. And then open our mouths, O oh God, to tell our true stories and to speak up when we see the world in pain. And as we join with you, we join with others to work for equity and inclusion for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Again, I'm very grateful uh, to be here and worship with you today. And um, we've sung some really great songs today. Um, so thank you for that um, inspiring. And now I charge you to go out into the world in peace and to hold on to what is good and return no one evil for evil, but to strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering to love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the gracious God of our Lord Jesus Christ go with us all to guide us with the light of the gospel 
and to gather us into God's righteous and beloved community today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.